Hi, my name is Erica S. Tejan, and I'm a lecturer of biology at Nevada State College. And I just wanted to share with everyone today um, some experiences that I've had uh, trying to modify sort of a low tech uh, way to engage students in the classroom to a COVID world. Uh, so the title of my presentation is Using an Interactive Personal Classroom Folder for Self-Reflection, Modifications for the Online Environment in an Undergraduate Biology Course. And where I got a bit of inspiration for this, my, my children are a little bit older now, but when they were elementary aged, uh, particularly kindergarten, uh, when they started using folders uh, as a way for parents and teacher to communicate and for kids to bring assignments home and, and manage their paperwork kind of as a conduit um, for all that information. I decided to try that for my um, undergraduate uh, lower division intro biology courses. And I started using this personal folder system for each student by truly just buying a student uh, folder for each person, um, having a little name tag on them so they could write their name. And then that was a folder that they would grab at the beginning of class and then use that um, during the class period at various times throughout the lecture. I would have a lecture prompt available for them. And preloaded in these folders, uh, I had these little journal sheets that I made that students then were able to write their thoughts and um, answer the journal uh, question prompts as they would appear in the classroom. And then, of course, at the end of the class period, they would return their folders um, into a little bin that I had, and they could use that to check in and out. So it became sort of their you know, pre and post routine for the class. So some of the kinds of prompts that I would have for them uh, at varying points throughout lecture. So there was no given time that I would give them a prompt necessarily, um, usually at the midway point, but not always, sometimes at the top of the, the class period. So maybe reading a short article that I gave them a paper copy of, um, a photo or an image for them to interpret, uh, a very short podcast, maybe minute or two long, very short form podcast to listen to in class and then uh, think about and, and write on the prompt. Maybe watch a short video, maybe a concept we had discussed in class that I wanted them to draw or sketch to explain. Um, or a question perhaps that I had for their own personal self-assessment. Tell me how you're you know, thinking about this idea or feeling today as it relates to this particular concept or topic or whatever that was. Um, and I saw these as all opportunities for students to be able to think, to process, to write um, in a multitude of different uh, fashions. And just to give you an example of what students would see when they would walk into the room and, and look at the prompt rather, um, would be something like this. So a slide that would be very obvious. They, they got pretty, pretty accustomed to the cues when they would see a slide like this, um, asking them something like this, for example, um, for them to use their physical journal to answer the questions. What is something you're looking forward to? What is something you're concerned about? Uh, much more as a self-assessment style question uh, as, as opposed to one that's more content-based. So I really liked this folder system and I was actually kind of sad to have to abandon uh, the physical folders. It, it was a nice way to you know, give students their own um, you know, predictable and repeatable item in class every time they walked in. They, they knew where to look for their folders. And I liked being able to give personalized feedback to students um, and make notes to them. I actually had some students uh, in the physical classroom tell me some pretty private things, actually. Um, and um, that allowed for me to be able to communicate with them there. Um, so thinking about how to adapt this to an online modality. So last semester, uh, we were fully online in the fall of 2020 and, and also continue to be this semester at my institution. And so what I did is I adapted their journal rather than having a physical folder to using a Google Slides uh, deck, slides file that I also pre-prepared for each student in a similar fashion that then each would have access to either by Zoom chat um, link that I would just drop in the shared folder link um, 
and also in Canvas. I had a self-standing obvious link in our uh, learning management system. We use Canvas uh, for students to be able to access outside of the physical classroom space. And so uh, students' uh, access point was the shared folder. So they would navigate to this shared folder and then they would come across a whole array of folder or, or files that looked exactly the same. They would click on their name and then that provided them access to their personal folder. So, um, or their journal, just like they would have in a classroom, as you might be thinking, a student could grab somebody else's folder. They could pick up a folder and use that in class and claim it to be their own. But students seem to really lock into this as their personal, um, piece of property, I suppose, and, and really take that to heart. And I, I've gotten the same uh, general idea with the electronic versions that they access their own folder and uh, tend to kind of ignore everybody else's, even though they do have access actually, because it's, it's a shared folder um, in, in, uh, in my Google Drive. So I hold all of the folders. Um, I, I keep all of their journals within a folder that's, that's shareable. Um, so then when they get into their name, they can then get to these prepared uh, blank quote unquote journal pages that look very similar to the way they would have looked uh, in the classroom that I also uh, uh, styled for them, uh, created and designed for them. Um, and then they can just uh, begin starting on the blank page as the instructions tell them uh, to enter in their responses to the prompts, whatever that happens to be. Um, and so they use this page and they can cut and paste um, pages or they can duplicate pages to continue to use those uh, throughout the semester. And they usually have about 10 entries, um, maybe every week and a half or week or so, um, I'll have a prompt available for them uh, to be able to answer in class. So just an example of one of the student responses that you see here. This was that original prompt question that I shared at the beginning of the presentation. And this is just a student's response. So you can see some of the things that this student commented about, um, some things that they're looking forward to, and then also my little uh, bits and pieces of feedback, just thanking them for their comment. And then also the little stamp with the smiley that tells them I've been there. I actually have these little, um, items that I created and keep in a file of my own so I can literally cut and paste things like happy face and my initials or a check mark or wow or interesting you know kinds of comments and then of course you can also I, I also personalize my comments uh, to students depending on sort of the nature of their presentation and their responses. So I actually really have, have grown to appreciate and enjoy this, this e-journal approach away from the physical uh, folders. I like the fact that uh, students can take a little bit more time to respond and, and be more reflective as they would if they had an actual true you know, journal uh, to jot their ideas and thoughts into. Uh, students can also watch or listen to longer form articles and have some more time to chew on those. Also, and I really like this flexibility, having the chat box in, in Zoom, because we use Zoom in class, makes um, journal access immediate um, in order for me to have short form feedback, or if it's a, you know, tell me something about this image or graph that you see, they can uh, get to that point um, immediately during class and maybe take just a couple of minutes or, or you know, a few minutes to be able to answer those questions. Um, and I also wanted to show you an example of a, a lecture prompt that would be from a video. So this would be something more like they would do on their own versus watching in class. So they would um, access this uh, document within their lecture notes, um, in addition to seeing it in class as, a, as an indicator, sort of as a reminder to them, they would access it uh, within their lecture notes because they've got time to be able to do this. Sometimes I give them two days, sometimes four, just kind of depends. And then they can get to a video in this case and watch through it and, and answer some questions about themselves and things they might find interesting or unusual and in addition to some more uh, guided and directed questions. And students seem to really like the, the personal electronic folders. Uh, one of the first comments I got this semester was, it's so cute and organized. Um, and the comment that, which I really appreciated, that the student saw that this, this meant that I took time to prepare something for them, took time to read their responses, um, and just the idea that it's a personalized approach for each student. 
Um, some possible extensions for the future that I'm still building into this practice is, is to use this as a place for students to practice on short answer exam questions uh, and also graph interpretation type questions if they have uh, one for exams. It's a good place for me to provide that feedback. They can also use it for peer review. Um, they could have access if I you know, kind of granted them access within the context of the course uh, to get to each other's folders and, and leave reviews and comments. Um, also to use it more of as an ask me anything uh, to prepare students for a more purposeful office hour visit. So if, if they're thinking about coming to me for test prep and suggestions, they can use this as a place to explore some of those ideas and then we can use our office hour time a little bit more um, um, directedly. And also it, you could use this for polling. Um, polling is great, but that also doesn't necessarily get you qualitative info. So asking students to be self-reflective and kind of think about their thinking um, is, is a great tool and definitely uh, is, is well uh, suited to this type of format. Um, so thanks uh, for listening to my presentation. And if you have any questions for me about the approach or anything that you could, um, some possibilities for alternatives. Um, I'd be more than happy uh, to talk with you about it and kind of pick your brain and see your ideas too. Uh, so you can reach out to me at my school email address. That's erica.tegen at nevadastatecollegensc.edu. Thank you so much for your time and attention.